Okay. <clears throat> Took a moment. Calm down. We're past the technical problem. The controller's working. The emulator's responding. We've got a save. We have a save state. Let's move on. We're backtracking through the butchers. Uh, we just left the sanitarium. We picked up the uh, the key for the lumber yard. You can see we examined that earlier when we were exploring, and it was locked. So we have the key to get through there now, and we are making our way to the Artod Theater, which the Artod Theater is a reference. Let me double check my notes. Uh, yeah, Antoine or Antonin Artaud, who in the early 1900s was a French writer, uh, actor, and theater director who was known for his con conceptualization of what was known as the theater of cruelty. Known for his raw, surreal, and transgressive work. His texts explored themes from the cosmologies of ancient cultures, philosophy, the occult, mysticism, and indigenous Mexican and Balinese practices. So, yeah. He's basically known for really messed up, raw, human, you know, what's known as the theater of cruelty which dealt with themes of occultism and mysticism. So appropriate, understandable, why uh, they would use his name in reference to the theater in a Silent Hill game. She's been gutted and split open. Yeah, the nurse is fucking dead. So the butcher has been here making that fresh and smoked sausage. Making that nurse sausage. It's just like Valheim. You just use your you just use intestines to be your sausage casings. If it works in Valheim, then I'm sure it's fine. That family vacation station wagon. No. No. You will not harass me this day. Oh god, there's three more of them. Leg it. Hey, Skulls. I've been doing okay. A bit frustrated with some technical issues the last since yesterday, really. But aside from that, doing pretty good. Well, what would you guys expect to be the tastiest monster to make sausages out of? Out of all the Silent Hill monsters, what would be the tastiest? I mean, somebody cooked a dog in Silent Hill 3, and that dog, to be fair, it had, like, carrots and onions. It had all these little chopped up veggies in it. There was, like, it was well plated and presented. The cow monster in this game, the, the roadkill enemies. Probably just tastes like hamburger. Someone has written on the newspaper. Why are you helping her, Travis? Did you see that nurse? The Luca Times County celebrates centenary. 
records missing. Trying to read some of these high like headlines and things on the the newspaper. You can only read so much. I'm assuming that when it says, did you see that nurse, it's referring to the one that was gutted and split open. Maybe it's talking about Lisa. Another hammer for my hammer collection. Go for the lumber yard. They have it set up like it's this this whole big area, and then it's just basically a hallway. Like not much to it. Just an obstacle. A, a locked door to separate that side of the, the town from this this side over here. Midway. Look at the street light. Waiting to see, did the light actually just change? Oh man. Why do you have to come over here and bother me, sir? I like how we have this really super wide camera shot for this angle. But then when you step on the uh, monster for the kill, like zooms way in. Weird textures. And weird proportions. Like these, the, the cars just don't look right. <laughs> like the more I look at this police car, the, the worse it looks. The more things that are wrong. That, that definitely was, you know. <laughs> Some of those assets they probably just had to really slap together. Because a lot of the other cars, like, you get the, the key out of the trunk of the car outside of the sanitarium. That car didn't look that bad. But the cop cars there looked rough. Okay. You notice it too, Trevor? It's, uh, it's not just me being crazy. I mean, the fact that I give a shit at all is what makes me crazy, but... <laughs> yeah, no. That's beside the point. That's a pretty fucked up looking model. Another giant gaping hole in the street. Imagine if a huge monster came up out of that. Just randomly. Imagine if scary things happened in this horror game. basically what I'm saying.
They probably had their interns work on the car models. I mean, they probably had everyone doing a little bit of everything, considering the way this, uh... This game kind of went into development hell. Ooh. Find the balls. Those straight jacket asses. I mean, they do got that booty, though. These fancy ass houses with their very specific, like, individual gates and everything. Like a much nicer side of the town. Although I will give it, I'll give Origins this. As far as, like, the new buildings and stuff that they added, having spent time and walked around in, in little towns in Maine, very much like Silent Hill is supposed to be. There's there's plenty of uh, little streets and neighborhoods. Businesses and things that look just like that. One of those things that a lot of games don't really take into account when, when your games are set in like a, a pretty specific setting, like even in the United States, you can kind of tell from buildings, architecture, you know, there's a very distinct style to things uh, built in, you know, areas in the south and uh, architecture up in New England and uh, things that, I guess, date back a lot older. Okay, we're just gonna use all the guns. Oh, already dead, didn't even have to stomp it. many hammers. Let me go in there. Energy drink. Baton. Oh, I keep forgetting. I need to pick up an item and show the alternate uh, item pickup animation. We need to pick up an item while holding a throwable weapon. Do I still have a throwable weapon? Did I throw everything at mom? God. I threw all of my throwables because I wanted to be funny in the, the mom boss fight. But now I need to find another yeetable and find an item on the ground to pick up. Good thing this is Silent Hill Origins, but there's still plenty of both. Hey, Monty Hugh. Thank you for being here. And enjoying what I do. I appreciate it. I think we've already cleared all that. Go ahead and go through the apartments. I'll 
also. This is just like a graveyard over here. Never get to go in there. It doesn't look like there's anything distinct with any of the tombstones anyway. Did you respawn? You fucking respawned. should be eatable change my mind every weapon in this game should be a throwable weapon it makes no sense why you can throw a toaster but not a screwdriver like especially if the end result is always that you lose that weapon and it breaks uh then why not why would you not be able to just throw it oh but here we go we got we have a table lamp we have a yeetable. A magtikel, magtikel. I am. I am sorry. Let me know how you want me to refer to you. How to say that name? Probably messed it up before. I'm gonna mess it up again. Thank you so much for the three months. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Thank you for the prime sub. Thank you, Madge. It's Might Kel? See, I'm a stupid American. I only speak English. I, I kind of speak Japanese. I know just a little bit of Spanish. And none of those things really has the, like, TK syllable pronunciation. I'll do my best. Might kill. from Poland, sorry. You better be sorry. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I bet it's very nice in Poland. I do not have a map. Did you ever come back online yesterday? Nope. That's why we started over today. I spent hours yesterday uh, dealing with my computer and trying to figure out what was wrong. And I still don't even know exactly what is wrong, but we're trying again today. Someone has written on the napkin, someone made a hole. Go home, Travis. That's not nearly as memorable as there was a hole here. It's gone now, but you tried. You tried, Silent Hill Origins. Look at that. You even got a dead body split open, hanging out in a bed now. A monster. Someone has mutilated it. The blood is all over the room. I wonder if it was that butcher who you actually watched mutilate a nurse already right in front of you. You think these these two things could be connected, Travis? Here we go, here we go. Look, so if you pick up an item normally, Travis just normally kneels down and picks up the item off the ground. But you see, I'm holding a table lamp. So Travis needs a little bit of extra finesse to, to be able to get down and pick up this razor blade off the floor. So instead of just like kneeling down and picking it up like normal, we pick it up like this. <laughs> That's the best thing to come out of Silent Hill Origins right there is that animation. The fact that that's how you pick things up while you're holding a, a throwable weapon. 
He just power squats down, shoves it directly into his anus. <laughs> Nature's pocket. Don't let him pick your pocket. I push the button, but the elevator doesn't come. The mailbox for apartment 213 is overflowing. Looks like the mail hasn't been collected for weeks. 213. So we're going to need to remember 213. They even highlight it in blue so that you, like, remember it. Because uh, that will be a code for later on. They make you remember that shit for a while, too. Because the solution for that, you use it in a register to get through the bookstore after you do everything in the theater. So you'll, if you're playing, like, a first time, you'll probably spend hours in the fucking theater and not really remember, like, that, that one number. <laughs> Pick up those bullets. Wait, wait. Position it just right. Get them bullets in there. Don't want to drop your lamp. The only way you can pick them up. Hmm? What was that? Who in the hell was that? Yo, Joanna. Thank you so much for the 500 bits. I might fall asleep soon, but just wanted to say you're doing great. Here's to hoping there won't be more technical difficulties anytime soon. God, I hope not. <laughs> Thank you so much for the bits. Very much appreciated. Hopefully you can get some good sleep. Small slot here for tickets. Like they are advertising a show, but it's got a thing that says canceled. You can see it actually says canceled across the front. But then the main sign up above there shows Tempest. And that's specifically what our ticket said. Faded Yellow Theater ticket admits one to the Tempest. But before we go into the theater, let's just explore the rest of this little side of town. That. Teasing me with the items on the other side of the fence. They make you go around the long way to get them. Never not childishly laugh at Travis power squatting down and picking up bullets with his butt cheeks. It's just always enjoyable. The most fun I get to have when I'm playing Silent Hill Origins. Hawkins Bail Bonds, 24 hour service. need to check the theater first. I don't want to. Never knew about the item squat. Now my life has changed for the better. <laughs> Very easily overlooked. You have to just be picking an item up off the ground and be holding a throwable weapon. A scenario that might not happen as often as people realize. It, it very easily go, <laughs> go missed unappreciated okay so we can't can't really go and explore really wants us to go to the theater first i guess we're going to the theater after we pick up this shotgun ammo this health drink 
Get a few more squats in. There was a noise from the main door. Sounds like it unlocked. In we go. It's another gigantic area that has both a regular world and a mirror world version. At least the theater is a little bit more interesting. Stuff is not all identical hallways the way the uh, sanitarium felt, but that's how it goes. You have the trusty toaster. We did pick up another toaster. Yeah, there we go. We can run around with our toaster. As soon as we get QTE'd by an enemy, we're going to drop it and lose it, but we'll see how long we can keep it. Walk down and get that wrench. jammed. Shakespeare, posters everywhere, Julius Caesar, Hamlet, all these references to Shakespeare. At least we don't have to do a uh, Silent Hill 3 hard mode Shakespeare puzzle. It's locked. Pistol ammo. Hey, Roses and Dreams. Glad you could be here for the live playthrough. I'll be doing a lot of story playthroughs uh, pretty much the rest of this week uh, and possibly next week. After Origins, I still want to get through Homecoming, Shattered Memories, and Downpour, uh, pre preferably before the end of the year. Oh, time for some uh, Lisa. We haven't seen Lisa in a little bit. What are you doing in here, Lisa? One of her iconic, Sorry, stupid lines of dialogue. You. I thought I was the only one in here. It's dangerous. Dangerous? You're kidding. The door was open, so I let myself in. I just love the theater, Travis. I want to be an actress. But mom was a nurse, and her mom was a nurse, so I'm going to be a nurse. I've got what it takes, though. I can't stop thinking about you, Travis. I want you. You're all I want. Yeah, Lisa was apparently just sitting in the empty theater Let's in the dark. The hell out of this crazy town. Waiting Run to be on. awkward with Travis. <laughs> See? I could be a star! <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. see you around. Sure. That was weird. Bye. More Lisa just kind of showing up in weird places for no real reason. We kind of like... I feel like it's just kind of reminder. It's just kind of like, hey, remember, this is a Silent Hill game. This has something to do with Silent Hill 1. So every once in a while, we just have to throw one of these Silent Hill 1 characters at you to, to remind you. Also, I'm very gradually sliding down this, this ramp. I'm not touching anything on the controller. But for some reason, I'm like, Scooting slowly to the right. Eventually, we're going to make our way down there. Oh. 
Yeah, look at that. Even if I turn and move Travis, once I stop, he starts moving again on his own. He just like slides. I never realized he does this. The fuck? Is it just because I'm standing next to these uh, chairs? Yeah, he doesn't really do it on the, the middle of the floor. But if you push all the way up against this, it's got some sort of weird collision that just like pushes you that way. I'm sorry, I've never noticed that before, and that's just very strange. When you've played this game like 10,000 times, that's the sort of shit that you start to get interested in. Weird little things happening like that. pick up this typewriter also there is just a puppet butt directly in the camera so enjoy that a puppet looks like someone is in the middle of repairing it these are known as aerials Their symbolism is puppets are creepy and they needed quick ideas that they could slap together for their theater level. <laughs> Unfortunately, stuff is not quite as deep in this game. The safety curtain. Oh, nope. And Dialogue. Hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be his shorty. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impossible... Hush. How thick is there is no more such... You okay, Tony? Yes. Yes. Fine. Just a headache. A damned nosebleed. You mind if we stop for a moment? Tony, question mark? So Tony is an actor. One of the actors playing a part uh, during a showing of The Tempest here at the Artaud Theater. And the, the plot line for this is essentially Alessa had uh, sort of run in here and hid in the theater while they were doing rehearsals and uh, the characters like that particular character was someone that she did not like so the things that Alessa didn't like she started inadvertently using her psychic abilities on so that guy getting the headache and the nosebleed is because Alessa is watching from the audience and doesn't like his asshole character. Because she's a seven-year-old, apparently, and doesn't know the difference between an actor <laughs> and, a, and a character. Uh, that's kind of shitty? I agree. <laughs> a lot of the story stuff like this is kind of shitty. Can't see anything useful on the desk. Peter, good luck getting anything to work. This place was wired by idiots. The safety curtain is on the same circuit as the spotlights. If a light blows, the whole thing fuses and you can't move the safety curtain. Idiots. Safety inspectors would blow a fuse, literally, if they saw this stuff. Wouldn't happen in the city. See you when I get back. Eric. So basically, because the lights are not working, the curtain won't move. There's no power to the switch. Oh, he 
easy to miss. There's a knife stuck in the chair. Get it. throwable weapon as once we start getting jumped by puppets there's a good chance I'll get stuck in a QTE and forced to drop throwables but there you go it's an aerial it's a weird little baby puppet thing they have a lot of animation to them they, they start up on the ceiling, but then they walk around on their hands. <laughs> and they ball their feet up into little fists. Fucking weird little puppet thing. I mean, it's, it's not the worst monster design, but yeah. Definitely a far cry from... The usual, like, Ito monster design of one through three. Ah. Not seen any ceiling monsters scoot around like that before in any game. Kind of interesting. Like, the whole moving living puppet thing is kind of cliche in general, but the animations are neat. The fact that it has so many animations, like all these different attacks, uh, when it's up on the ceiling, when it's down on the ground, um, kind of interesting. Pizza boxes, dried makeup, that's all I can see here. A katana just hanging out. Hey, low level goob. Welcome. I did not want to go through that. I wanted to read the note in front of the mirror. Here's a little bit of explanation. Jack says the town is located on old spiritual ground. Hopefully we will be blessed. I don't think it's that kind of spiritual ground. Uh, Prospero equals shaman. Feathers, smoke, totemic magic. We saw the totem pole uh, props on the stage when we were walking across just now. So all these things representing Prospero. Ariel. Air spirit, light, projection, puppets. So yeah, those are the, the puppet enemies. They're literally just called aerials. Um, and that is what they, they represent. They are puppets, air spirits, light and projection, question marks. Like even they don't really know what the connection is. And then Caliban, which is the boss of the theater like, that's going to be our, our boss enemy uh, before we leave the theater. The Buffalo Spirit. Skins and Burkhoffian performance on all fours. Poor actor. And the reason the Caliban shows up as, an, as a creature is because the actor wearing the costume, they sort of show it in the sketches there, it's like a person down on all fours wearing all these animal skins. Which is kind of what the enemy resembles. So it's this creature that, well, the actor in the costume scared Alessa. And that fear manifested itself once Alessa was burned and the nightmare over other world started affecting the town uh, and created the Caliban creature. And the Ariel puppets. It's 
scripts. Haven't got time to read this sort of thing. <laughs> we don't have time for a script. Are you kidding? Konami said we have to finish this game with the same amount of remaining budget and time as the guys in Climax LA had. And they made Resident Evil 4 and a story about scrubs. Think we have a script? Sam Barlow had to write this in a week. <laughs> The QTE attack with these is especially annoying. Finish him. I am. ammo. Door is jammed shut. That is way too close to Travis's crotch. But we'll just let everyone enjoy that for a moment. Top-notch camera angle there. That trucker swamp ass hits different. Plus, Travis has the Hank Hill booty going on. Where it's not even flat, like concave. Katana broke. What else do we got? Let's just try to use all the weapons. Let's hit him with the drip stand. How have we not been hitting him with that drip stand? Weight Origins weapons are breakable? Yeah, that's why they give you so many. This game puts uh, fucking Breath of the Wild to shame with how quickly everything breaks. out of that fucking swing. I was so far away I'm trying to hit him like as far back as possible. And it doesn't matter. QTE. QTE just can win out in any scenario. And he's just gonna do it every single time. Look how far I was, I ran away. And it still fucking got me. All right.
There you go. Ow. Now he's got his little feet fists. Dude, why won't you die? Thank you. I love the breaking icons for the guns. Just constantly switching back and forth. Ornate iron key for the balcony. Very descriptive. The sound design is strange, quiet at the wrong time, strange sound effects that don't feel appropriate for the horror and monsters. Yeah, it, it is a little bit weird. It, it clashes at times. Yeah, the fact like doors, a lot of the doors don't make any kind of noise or anything. On either side of the door are two deep square holes. Set into the door is a plaque which reads, I am a child torn by twin desires. I stand before a door, my right hand calls to the light, my left hand ushers in darkness. We're supposed to find two uh, totems, two of these like square stone blocks with the sun and the moon. Representing that light and darkness. But funny enough, you don't actually need both to get through that door. You only need one. There's actually a bug with that puzzle. And I'm pretty sure it works in the PlayStation 2 version, the same way it works in PSP. But basically, you just put one totem in and then leave the hallway and go right back in. And it acts as though both totems are in and the door unlocks. Don't know why, but... You can just basically completely skip that puzzle. Check these rooms. Can't see anything useful on the shelves. Files, invoices. Nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> Nothing says quality like a horribly broken puzzle required for progression, but we take it as it is. I mean, you can still have... I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. I very openly and for a long time have talked about how much I really dislike this game. You don't have to accept things as they are. You're allowed to be harshly critical. Especially when something is like very noticeably, objectively like broken and messed up. Monday. Rehearsals. Fantastic. New costumes. Fantastic. All in all, fantastic. Tuesday. Strange day. Girls snuck into theater today, so that's Alessa. Playing hooky, no doubt. Took pity. Let her sit and watch the run-through. Very useful feedback. Terrified by Caliban. Good job, costume department. So that's why Caliban shows up as a creature from Alessa's Nightmares. 
seemed to dislike Prospero intensely. Prospero is the character being played by the actor named Tony, getting the headache and nosebleed. That was Alessa using her psychic abilities to hurt his head, make him bleed because she disliked Prospero. Proceedings brought to premature end by poor Tony getting a shocking nosebleed. <clears throat> During Act 1, Scene 2, we'll continue tomorrow. And we also picked up our sun totem, a square stone totem with a sun symbol painted on it. So yeah, technically the game wants you to go all the way around and unlock one of the side doors so that you can get the moon totem in order to uh, get through that puzzle, that hallway with the door puzzle. Locked. And I'm gonna get QTE'd here no matter what. But, like I said, there's a glitch so that you don't actually... It's not even like a glitch. You don't even have to do anything crazy on your end. You literally just... putting one totem in and then leaving and the puzzle just solves itself. Go through the mirror. I also haven't really talked about the controls, but I've said the same thing when it comes to like Silent Hill 4, and this game is the same way. Static camera angles and directional controls are so fucking awkward. Like, I know a lot of people really dislike tank controls, but tank controls were such an important aspect of games that utilize static cameras. Because if the player doesn't have control of the camera, you need to have confidence that when you are pushing up, you know, your character is moving forward. And when you have directional controls mixed with static camera angles that are constantly switching and you're trying to just, like, run in a straight line or move in a particular direction. But, you know, for this camera angle, I have to press down and left to get Travis to move in a straight line up the stairs. And then once you reach the top of the stairs, that direction is no longer down and left. Down and left now moves you this way. So it's like, okay, you kind of have to adjust with it. And then you move to the top of that, and the camera changes again. So then you, you're constantly having to, like, readjust what you're doing with your controls instead of it being, like, nice and fluid. Here is this wonderful puzzle. We're going to put the sun totem in. And then, oh, we still need the moon totem, so let's leave. And then you just go back in. And did you hear that stone sliding noise? That's the sound of the door unlocking. The puzzle just stops existing, like... It just solves, even though you only had one of the totems. Very cool. And this game has odd button response too. There is like a weird delay on uh, button inputs. 
there's definitely a, a weird delay. So like, whenever I press the run button, So like, I'm just gonna say now. Now. See how it takes like a full second after I say now before he actually starts running? Now. Now. So, every input has this kind of weird delay on it. Some buttons are worse than others. The only working directional controls with static camera angles work. Uh, workaround I've seen is Fatal Frame 1. Run button just keeps you running forward between camera angles. Yeah, see, that's a smart way to go about it. And a lot of games that try to do directional controls with constantly changing static camera angles, like just... You just have to try and adjust... You basically have to, like, stop and let go and then start moving again. Every single time. The, uh, the camera shifts. Do you think the delay was meant to help with the camera angle shifts? Probably not. I, I don't feel like it was... Intentional. At least not for that purpose. A hunting rifle. Got a few new guns now. So earlier we picked up the very first one was the target pistol. Kind of thing you see on a gun range. It stings more than it bites. You have the shotgun. Shotgun only takes two cartridges at a time, but at close range it's unstoppable. Service pistol. All the icons are broken because that just happens in this game. The U.S. Army surplus weapon is well used, but still as smooth as ever. And now the hunting rifle. This breech loader is slow to fire, but powerful with a long range. Is the PS2 version definitive edition? What does that even mean, Chedville? <laughs> uh, there's pros and cons to Origins, PSP version and PS2 version. I wouldn't say... I, I would say very, very specifically, the Definitive Edition, the, the best way of playing Origins, I assume that's what you're asking me, is the way I'm playing it. You're you're playing the PS2 version through PCSX2 where you can turn up the brightness settings and adjust a lot of the issues cuz the base console version of Origins is notoriously dark <clears throat> where like you just can't see anything. Uh but you can fix that in the emulator with custom shaders and stuff. So probably the best way to play the game at least as far as visuals this is about as good as it gets for origins costumes not the kind of thing i'd ever wear even though travis has like 10 unlockable costumes in this game there's a ton of unlockable stuff in in origins Props and costumes, nothing of much real use. Since what happened to Tony, I've dreamt about him more and more. The Butcher, more reference to the Butcher. He looks just like that monster, the Executioner. So, the fact that they say they're like referencing Pyramid Head, essentially, that monster, the Executioner. 
He looks very similar. He literally was Pyramid Head in the first version of Origins they were working on. And then they reused that model and altered it just slightly to make the Butcher. Now I've seen him when I'm awake. He's at my motel. We'll actually go to the motel later and see more of that. Uh, more, more from that perspective. It's him. I swear it. And then we actually hear the butcher's weapon, butcher killing something or someone. So apparently other people have just seen and interacted with these like nightmarish creatures. But these are notes from people who were here in the theater, like, when Alessa was just here. Like, Alessa wasn't burned yet. There was no other world yet. There was no nightmare stuff happening yet. So this person, random person in the theater, was just, like already seeing the butcher and apparently also had seen monsters before that because they're comparing the butcher to another monster presumably pyramid head because they call him the executioner <clears throat> it don't make sense these appear to be cases for instruments Music stands. I can't play any instruments. Okay. May have seen the painting at the Historical Society. Don't make excuses for the sloppy writing. Catwalks. Damned. Uh, so this is where we're going to have to solve a puzzle. But we need light bulbs. Remember, the stage lights are tied into the curtain control based on the note that we found uh, from the electrician, Eric, downstairs. So, in order to get all the lights working, we're going to need to go get all the light bulbs. kitchen knife for a little while. Do a little Michael Myers. Uh, Budakauto. I don't think the judgment painting was even real. I think the paintings were James slowly spiraling into insanity. Uh, Masaru Ito, and I think some of the other, one of the other devs has, has mentioned that. Um, where the image of Pyramid Head, like, looking the way that he does, is because James saw that painting when he visited the Historical Society with Mary. So, it, it is real. Like, that that is supposed to be, like, a historical painting depicting the old executioner's 
uh, during the Civil War and before the Civil War back in Silent Hill's history because you find more paintings depicting the executioners and talking about them when you descend into the prison which is supposed to be like 1800s uh, but yeah the devs have actually mentioned that those the painting is supposed to be real so technically anybody who went to Silent Hill and looked at that painting could theoretically see a pyramid head not super unique to James. Personally, I don't like that, but what the devs have said. Um, Peter, as expected, the spotlights are as screwy as the rest of this place. Finally got them working. My trusty voltmeter saved the day. Again. Remember, you need all the lights working, otherwise the circuit blows. Throwing the circuit breaker gets old fast. Here are my notes. B has to be half the wattage of D. A plus B must not exceed C. Wattage of D must not exceed A. Break a leg. Eric. Eric, you dick. Just write down which bulb goes in which spotlight like I understand this is this is a video game and we need to figure out how to put some puzzles in there but how stupid is it when your puzzle is just like Eric the electrician <laughs> leaving behind a cryptic note Or how you're supposed to put the light bulbs in the stage lights instead of just labeling them? Like, seems like you could just label them. Then there wouldn't be a problem, and you wouldn't have to solve a stupid riddle. That won't open. All right. Go to the catwalk. Got all the bulbs. Ammo. All right, so we have spotlights marked A, B, C, and D. We have bulbs that are varying wattages, 125 watt. 750 watt, 250 watt, 500 watt. So B has to be half the wattage of D. So there's only so many wattages of bulbs where one is exactly half of the other. So, let's say 250 and 500 are two of our options. So, B would, ha would be half the wattage of D. So, B would be 250. D would be 500. A plus B must not exceed C. And the wattage of D must not exceed A. So, if you try and do 250 for B and 500 for D, and wattage of D must not exceed A, D would be 500.
And there's only so many things that are higher than 500. I think only one. I think I'm slow dying. So then the 250 and 500 doesn't work because the wattage is then too high. So you look at the other option where you can do exactly half. That would be the 125 and 250. So B would be 125. D would be 250. A plus B must not exceed C, and D must not exceed A. So let's put 125 in B. And 250. In D, then A plus B must not exceed C. So if five hundred plus the one twenty five for six twenty five would not exceed 750 and then that would put 750 as C and the wattage of D would not exceed A so D would be 250 but then A yeah, it would not exceed A. We put 500 in A. Put 750 in C. Lights are working. And since the lights are working, that means the curtain control will also be working. We got some more Yamaoka jammers. Again, pretty good soundtrack. Pretty good soundtrack overall. kitchen that's fine I'm not going anywhere stairs here.
Oh, now that we're, uh, we've kind of gone the long way around, you can see, uh, this guy stops fucking me to death. There's the totem that we didn't need to solve that puzzle. Normally you have to do a whole bunch of other shit and come around this way and get that. And then go all the way back to that hallway to uh, place both totems in, but nope, puzzle just solves. Puzzle just does not work. up. Lights are on. Like we're set up for a show. Something's blocking it. Can't open this door. Get this whole little side area. Nothing there. Let's go this main thing. So the whole gimmick here is you can change out the props on the stage and it will affect where you go, like what area you see when you go through the mirror. Um, as far as like utilizing the mirror mechanic, I wish there was more stuff like this, where instead of it just being a lot of backtracking to use mirrors just as a way to kind of pad out getting through somewhere, putting a puzzle around one mirror that can be used in multiple ways. So you just have a mirror where, you know, the different props let that mirror kind of act as a portal that goes to different places. To me, that's at least a bit more interesting than just here is a mirror. Here is your spot where you can choose to go to the other world so that you can go around and unlock this door. This is this one setup here is probably the best use of the mirror mechanic in in a game where the mirror mechanic is one of the main things. It's a wooden tree. This wooden backdrop has clumps of trees painted on it. That's a corpse, a body hanging off of a branch, the arms hanging on the side, the head stuck up there. I got the stage office key. There be not a fear, the aisle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give the light 
Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then have waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. But then, the dream, the clouds me thought would open and show riches, ready to drop upon me that, when I waked, I cried to dream again. So there we have uh, some lines directly from The Tempest, which is the show that's being put on at Artoad that frightened Alessa. So that uh, particular line is one of the Caliban's lines in The Tempest, and considering that is also the boss, the name of the creature that... Uh, we're about to have to fight. That seems appropriate. A little bit of foreshadowing to the Caliban boss. So we can take a look at the other scenery and props. This is like an optional one that uh, gives us some extra books and things we can look at. Wooden prop table. Books and papers are painted on it. that like instantly skip over here we go chapter two repression and coercion the way this is written it's it's meant to it feels very similar to the uh, the monster lurks in silent hill one uh manifestations of delusions it is a fact well known to intelligence services and military agents. The more controlled a mind, the more a mind censors itself, the easier it is for outside influences to take hold and piggyback such mental programming. This is why these agencies choose for their pawns those individuals most compromised by their own mental issues. All right. On lore. projection. Amongst the tribes who have developed the ability to control and focus their projections, there exists one that is feared throughout the whole community. Their shaman claims to have the ability to kill with thought alone, projecting his desire to kill into the body of the victim. This is what they're implying Alessa can do, that she can astral project, which she kind of does in Silent Hill 1, but it's more manipulating the other half of her soul manipulating that aspect of Cheryl once she's within her influence again, rather than just like straight up astral projecting, I guess. Um, and then projecting their desire to kill and killing with thought alone, uh, causing the headache and the nosebleed to the actor, supposed to imply that that's what Alessa is capable of doing. Again, we're going way off script here from Silent Hill 1, basically. Throughout these case studies, we see the victim's brain struggling to cope with the conflict caused by abuse at the hands of a loved one. In many of the cases, the abused child's self appears to split in two. Literally, Alessa splits her soul in two. One personality continues to love the abuser and seeks their approval. The other personality contains all the rage and anger of the abused and in many ways becomes a mirror of the abuser, seeking to inflict its pain on others. Sadly, it is often this self that becomes dominant. So they're trying to give the implication that there is essentially two Alessas. There is the 
the personality that continues to love the abuser and seek their approval and and basically follow along with what her mother Dahlia Gillespie was doing and then trying to say that this other aspect of Alessa was the rage and anger and again that's one of those weirder aspects of the story where Alessa and Silent Hill 1 didn't come off as like angry and and vengeful you know she was tormented she was abused she endured a lot of pain but she wasn't ever really like Sadako, you know. Books are completely alien to me. These books are in a language I don't recognize. The letters are strange. Look at this fucking, like, Dark Souls archives. <laughs> the Grand Duke's archives, like, area here. Just for, like, a little optional area to read a couple notes. Pick up an ampule. Manifestations of Delusions. It's The Monster Lurks by Leonard Rhine from Silent Hill 1. Chapter 3, Manifestations of Delusions. Phenomena such as telekinesis, poltergeists, to use a popular term, often occur. These seem frequent alongside negative emotions, fear, worry, or stress, suggesting it is these emotions which are manifesting as external energy with physical effects. It's rewritten. It's not word for word. It's very close to word for word, but it's not exactly the same as uh, these uh, these paragraphs that you read in Silent Hill 1. Nightmares are especially strong triggers. In all cases, these phenomena arise from children or adolescents, and the overwhelming majority of subjects are female. It's strange that they even include that as a reference in this book, considering that that reference in Silent Hill 1, that book, is part of what seemed like they, the, the plot of Alessa being burned being the result of her heightened stress levels triggering a psychic event where it had physical manifestations and caused... The fire um, which would mean that she was not burned intentionally like that's that's part of the use of that that book that article in Silent Hill 1 is to sort of convey that idea that Alessa was not burned intentionally whereas the start of this game very clearly, she's intentionally being burned by Dahlia Gillespie in, like, a ritualistic circle and, and everything. So, it's, it's odd that they would include Manifestations of Delusions article in this game. But then sort of contradict that element of the story. Get out of my way. Why does my execution move never work? 
stage office is back this way. Don't need to use the mirror. Oh, give me that portable TV. How did I miss that? It grabbed me through the corner of the wall. God, these... These QTE attacks in this game are so fucking nutty. They just instantly grab you from so far away. Wish. Oh, he stepped on him instead of firing a bullet. Is that because I ran out of bullets? It is. That was one of those rare moments. I had one bullet left to down the enemy, but I didn't have the bullet left to finish him off on the ground. So you just stomp on him, which means they actually had the thought to make him switch over to stomping on things if you don't have the bullet. So that was intentional, that if you keep the gun equipped, you waste a bullet finishing off the enemy on the ground. Why would he not just stomp? Why would you not just stomp by default and not waste a bullet? Help me understand. Like, that means it was intentionally designed that way. Oh, there's our missing prop control lever. That's all we really need. Papers and books. Kitchen is accessible again. Go chat. Be free. Go to my kitchen. Oh shit. Silent Hill in American Town? Yes. Silent Hill has always been set in New England, specifically in Maine, in the United States. Like, they give a physical address for Heaven's Night in uh, supplementary materials. And it's a, a main state address. But uh, Team Silent, when they were making the original Silent Hill, one of their biggest influences was Stephen King. And Stephen King notoriously, you know, sets a lot of his stories in New England, specifically in Maine. Uh, he lives in Maine. So. Silent Hill is also set there. A control lever. A thin metal lever. A lever. One end is threaded to be screwed into a socket. This will be the Caliban's Cave. Not that one. Apparently Silent Hill does exist in Japan. Yeah, the actual name for Silent Hill comes from Shizuoka. is a prefecture in Japan that literally translates to, you know, Silent Hill.
We'll use the rifle. This is some sort of costume suspended from the ceiling above. Made of musty smelling fur and rope. So that's the... Caliban uh, costume. Now we're going to fight the creature. Born from Alessa's nightmare. looks a lot like the closer from Silent Hill 3. Just the like really swollen stumpy limbs with all the bandages and stuff wrapped around. So the very first piece of the Flowros we picked up was the future piece. After that, we picked up the past piece. Now we've got another piece, and we've also got one of my favorite bits of dialogue in this whole game. The falsehood piece. You need these, don't you? Oh wait, the, the line is not until later. That's not until the next piece we get. Got your thing. Well, that's quite a uh, camera angle to start us off with. More puppet butt. And some big bloody streaks. Got the motel key. Riverside Motel. Oh, oh. Travis is connecting with I've his inner child. Before. I think I've been there before. Except this was never like a repressed memory. I just have to reiterate. Travis is like, I think I've been there before. The Riverside Motel. A as if this is like a big revelation to him. The start of this game was another trucker telling Travis that he can't get laid because he's always talking about his issues. Like, he knows specifically what his problems are. He knows his traumatic past. It's not like Silent Hill 2, where James has, like, delusions of reality and has blocked out what's happened. Travis is fully aware. So there's no reason for him to be doing this, like... Oh, the Riverside Motel. That sounds familiar. That sounds like that hotel where I was when my dad killed himself and I stood and watched his lifeless corpse swing from the ceiling as a child that traumatized me. And years later, I got a job working as a truck driver and told all my co-workers about it and they made fun of me for it. It seems familiar. Bovagog was taken. Thank you so much for the 16 months. Does he know what my problems are too? No. I'm sorry. 
He's not a therapist. He's a truck driver. But he knows his own life. So thank you so much for the 16 months. Very much appreciate it. Well, all right. Looks like we're going to the Riverside Motel. It's Silent Hill. There has to be some amnesia plot. There really doesn't, though. And it is funny to me that the games sort of get to this point where you have amnesia plot even when the characters literally don't have amnesia and remember everything anyway. Downpour is the exact same way. Like, Murphy knows what happened. Stop resisting. I hit you with this baton. But before two, it was, uh, before four, it was only two that was all in the head. Two wasn't even all in the head. It was just. Two was definitely the more focused on, like, the psychological aspect of, like, perception. How different people view reality through different filters. Like, full-on delusions. With severe amnesia and other things going, going along with it. But yeah, Silent Hill 1, like... There's nothing like that with Harry. And everybody's not experiencing their own individual tailor-made, you know, nightmare worlds based on their trauma. Everyone's experiencing Alessa's nightmare. Same thing in 3. When Heather starts experiencing the nightmare, she talks about it to Douglas. Douglas is talking about experiencing the same thing. Dude, watch where you're poking. Nah, it's fine. We got him in the weak spot. <laughs> Wish. Oh yeah, I mean, Silent Hill 2 really, for better and worse, altered the rest of the series after it. Like, Team Silent was still doing their own stuff, like, creatively with 3 and 4. Uh, but even 3 and 4 have their little throwbacks to, to 2. Because, you know, 2 eventually became the huge fan favorite. Which, I mean, I understand. It's it's my favorite Silent Hill game. Not for, like, the wrong reasons. But unfortunately, when you have something that becomes successful like that in a long-running franchise, a lot of times they spend too much time trying to recapture that instead of exploring new and different ideas. So you just wind up seeing the same stuff over and over again. Everyone gets their own personal psychological purgatory. Everyone gets their own big bad guy that represents guilt or something. Everyone gets amnesia. And repressed memories. Everyone gets sexy nurses. 
The stuff in my head is bad enough. I don't need any of these. We don't need horror books. We have real life horror. Just another book. Nothing of interest in here. Other people's jokes don't make me laugh. You're the type of person who only laughs at your own jokes, Travis. I don't have time to read any of these. Am I going to end this playthrough today? Uh, yeah. I always try to do my story playthroughs in a single sitting. Trying to pick up a stream when you're in the middle of, a, of the game and everybody is just like, can you explain to me everything that you spent eight hours on the last stream explaining? I just don't like doing that. But I just try to do it. Any, anytime I do story playthroughs, I just finish them in one stream. Alt rifle. Why I don't do as many story playthroughs anymore. Because it's a lot harder for me to do insanely long streams. And story playthrough streams are always uh, really, really long. Andy. Everything is fine. Sold lots of books. Have locked your keys in the cash register. The combination is your Greenfield apartment number. Hope you enjoyed your vacation. Dharma. Yeah, just an, an AK-47. Just hanging out. Just hanging out in the bookstore. This knockoff of an Iron Curtain rifle has a large magazine that holds 18 bullets. But they even point out that it's like a knockoff. I'm not, I don't know anything about guns. I couldn't tell you. Grandpa can't do long streams no more. Dude, my health has deteriorated so much in the last just like three or four years. It's genuinely concerning, but I can't afford health insurance to do anything about it, so... We just keep on keeping on. And rows of books. Alright, so we gotta get the book, or we gotta get the key from out of the register. They said they used the apartment number, which was that number where the mail was overflowing. Way back before we went into the theater, they expect you to remember that number. Although you can backtrack to it and find it again if you uh, get stuck there, like wandering around. Did this guy come sprinting out of the alleyway as soon as he heard my gun? Oh my god, there's so many. They just show up. Uh, so if you're playing on New Game Plus, this stairwell will open up and you can go up there to get the key that lets you get the UFO ending. And there's also a uh, cocoon. A reference to Float Stinger, because that's the rooftop where you fight uh, Float Stinger, the giant moth, in Silent Hill 1. Also, we're here at Konami Burger. There it is. Konami Burger. And the giant pile of MSG boxes.
today. Silent Hill had Chinese restaurants? I want some Chinese. And Rachel did Chinese food the other night. Come pow shrimp. It was good. Dahlia ran her own Chinese franchise. He was too busy running the antique store. Maybe she had a part time job at Hot Dog. stuff. Not too bad, and we're about to get a lot more. Ammunition. Played Silent Hill as a toddler and never knew there was a map wandering around and tried every door this game has multiple times each. <laughs> Damn, as a toddler. This game you played as a toddler? That makes me feel old. Origins was 2006, 2007. I was already out of high school. All the dates have expired, so I'd rather not drink these. Full of old bottles. No, nothing else. Nothing of interest on the counter. Even though there is interesting things on the counter. Oh yeah, we get this lovely uh Children's bedtime story. Here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes the butcher to chop off your head. I wonder what that could be foreshadowing. The butcher. Sounds like Pyramid Head. He literally was Pyramid Head. Basically, for anybody who missed my explanation earlier in the playthrough, or any of my previous playthroughs over the years, uh, there were two versions of Silent Hill Origins. You had Climax LA, who was making the initial project, and it was a much more action-based, like Resident Evil 4, over-the-shoulder camera, uh, shooting lots of guns type of type of game and the story was apparently based on the TV show Scrubs it was supposed to be like a black comedy like a dark comedy um, so there was like all this weird stuff going on and in that version of Origins that they were working on um, Pyramid Head was going to be in it but the director, Sam Barlow, basically said, this game is going to be an embarrassment. We need to redo all of this. He told Konami that they need to redo all of it. And Konami said, fine, you can start over, but we're not giving you any extra time or budget. But then they basically had to remake Silent Hill Origins from the ground up again. Uh, so Climax UK took over. 
and basically remade Origins with half the time and budget. And uh, they didn't have time to make a whole lot of new assets. So the old Pyramid Head assets from the first version of the game got slightly modified into the Butcher assets for the final retail version of Origins. So when we see the Butcher, he's more than just like similar to Pyramid Head. He literally is Pyramid Head, just a slightly modified model. And now Caliban is uh, wandering around the streets. Another boss enemy that just becomes a regular, regular enemy after you fight it. The whole game description of RE4 plus Scrubs sounds so stupid. I want it to exist now. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous that that was a concept even for that far into development. Uh, and there is, like, leaked uh, demo stuff from back in the day uh, of that version of Origins. One of these days, uh, I know I've got it on a hard drive somewhere. Uh, I just don't know where exactly. But one of these days, I'll have to set it up and we can play it. There's not much to it. There's only one enemy model And it's just like a little chunk of the town, and you're just kind of running around, shooting stuff over the shoulder. So it's not it's not like super interesting, but it's out there. them supplies. I think that... Nope. There's more. How many hammers? How many litter bugs in Silent Hill? And they're all throwing away perfectly good hammers. Out of all the enemies that were a boss before, why was there no booty smashing boss? <laughs> the uh, the two backs? Like why why do you never fight a boss version of them? I don't know. That's a good point. The booty smashing boss. Yeah, we're gonna be. Coming up on the that enemy pretty soon. The booty smashers. I mean, it's literally called a two back, as in the beast with two backs. As in, that's a euphemism for people making the fuck. Travis is having wonderful memories to his time as a child when he came to this motel and his dad committed suicide. That's literally the plot of 
origins right now. And again, there's no reason like Travis should he doesn't have amnesia like it's never established that these are repressed memories in fact the exact opposite is established at the very beginning of the game when other truckers know what his issues are i just can't get past that like why does it they why do they suddenly treat it as though travis is like rediscovering all these things about his past clearly he's aware of them Just some old flyers and a desk fan. Looks like it hasn't been used in a while. There's a rotary calendar here. Take a look. So we can input uh, different dates. We're going to need to figure out a specific date. items pick up sound just goes ballistic that starts happening more and more he with the label 306 other keys there but apparently we're just not interested in those that's like kind of a messed up thing to do in a silent hill game where so much of it is finding and using keys to have like keys that you have a very clear view of with like a camera angle and everything that you just don't pick up he doesn't even comment on them like you pick up the one but that's it Motel, which is not actually that massive. It's just a lot of doors to check, and most of them are nothing. But that's kind of Silent Hill in a nutshell, so that doesn't bother me too much. hotel rooms you can go into that don't really have much to them, just some supplies or the occasional enemy. Oh boy, plastic crate. I need to throw at something. A barrier's been erected here. I'm not going to get through it. Oh, come on. That's not much of a barrier. Just do not cross tape. You don't have to abide by it. A suitcase full of shoes. Possibly a reference to uh, Twin Peaks. One-armed shoe salesman. Also, was that a fucking spear? I think this is where we start getting the spears. Let me just cycle through my 103 other weapons. It was a light stand. 
This light stand is missing its bulb and shade, but looks fearsome enough. Might as well be a spear. Short-handled shovel, good for maiming bodies and then for burying them. Cool. A broken pole, fairly long, might come in handy for keeping things at a distance. Some of these we didn't look at. Toolbox. It's empty and the lock is busted, but it's still a hefty weapon with sharp edges. It even says tools right on the box. in there. Just the suitcase full of shoes. If someone came at me with a toolbox, I'd be afraid. Hey, it's a big heavy metal toolbox. That shit would probably hurt. Someone whipped it at your head as hard as Travis throws things. I mean, when he rears back to throw something, the entire earth shakes. So it would probably just obliterate you if he threw anything at you. Especially a toolbox. It's locked tight. Locked from the other side. We're just kind of clearing out the map. Getting everything marked. Because this is basically the end of the game. This is the last, uh... Or, I guess, technically second to last little area. Basically the last area of the game. Box broke. Alright, so that's everything down here. Now let's go upstairs. Are the weapons designed enough that uh, using some types of weapons for specific enemies is actually helpful, or just use whatever you have because it's all chaos? Uh, it's mostly chaos. Like, obviously, ranged weapons are better against we uh, enemies that you don't want to get closer to you, but there's not much depth beyond that. There's not, like, specific, you know... This enemy has this weakness to this kind of weapon, you know. Oh, shit. Plus, most of the time, they just jump on you and QTE attack you anyway. Stop it. Oh, we got a gunshot, but no, uh... But then he stepped on him. Oh, but we did still have bullets. So if it's the last shot in the clip, instead of reloading and shooting on the ground, he does the stomp. See, I still don't understand why he wouldn't just always stomp instead of wasting a bullet. If they took the time to think that out, why have him waste the bullet at all? Toaster the end boss this time? Oh man, I'll try. It's it's so hard to, to get it set up where specifically the last like toaster hits him and kills him. Oh, he started to get up. That's everything here, but we can run around to the other side.
that. Another light stand. Wedding gear. Looks like it's been here a while. I don't know if this is a direct reference or not, but seeing the wedding gear laid out like this always reminds me of Beetlejuice. Again, it's just wedding clothes laid out on a bed. There's plenty of ways to interpret that. Even within this game's own lore, uh, it could just be a reference to Travis's parents. But, I don't know, seeing it laid out like that always, always kind of makes me think of uh, that scene in Beetlejuice where they're performing the... Uh, the ritual exorcism? Not really an exorcism. Broken. Broken. so weird i was expecting travis to pick them up yeah they're very angular and and i don't know they sort of stand out a lot more than some of the other stuff in the uh in the room in the environment in general than the keys. You're not wrong. So this is the two backs that I was talking about. And it's literally just two human figures stuck together at the butt. Well, one is stuck in the other one's butt. beast with two backs. They fucking. No denying this one. Christophonics, thank you for the six months. But subs. Oh no. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. Thank you, thank you. Three oh six key. Back there in a moment. Unlock this. broken. course it's only appropriate you start running into the two backs specifically in the motel although there is again some ways to kind of tie that in with the lore uh travis's father 
was having an affair, basically coming here and sleeping with uh, prostitutes. No, oh, don't go back through. Coming to this this motel, seedy motel, and sleeping with prostitutes because he had given up on his wife. Like his wife, Helen, lost her mind, tried to kill their son, was uh, committed to the sanitarium. So he was trying to, uh, oh my god, keep trying to examine the far wall in the room, and the hitbox for the mirror is just gigantic. So we're just gonna go back and forth between the other, the other world like 50 million times here. There we go, it's fine. We're out of the loop. So yeah, now we're going to start finding all of the notes from Travis's father talking about his wife and everything else. My beloved wife, I miss you so intensely. Watching them take you away was like a dagger through my heart. A dagger and a heart are going to be two of the main puzzle items that we see in this area. It had to be done, but now I am so alone. At the doctor's advice, I told Travis you were dead. Maybe it would be better if you were. Helen, will you ever come back to me? Yours forever, Richard. So Richard Grady, Travis's father, uh, is talking about how how painful it was to lose his wife, but you know she wasn't actually dead. She's just sort of lost her mind. At least as far as their perspective, maybe she actually can walk through mirrors and is possessed by demons and. Travis actually has a demon in him. Who knows? This game is weird. At the doctor's advice, I told Travis you were dead, so he, Richard actually gave Travis the impression that, you know, his mother was dead, even though she was still alive in the uh, Cedar Grove Sanitarium. And that gives us a little more context when you see that flashback of young Travis uh, entering that room to the boss fight with his mother. And uh, he says, you know, I thought you were dead. Or dad said you were dead. And then she says, no, not dead, just locked away. Out of sight, out of mind. not examine this door at all. There we go. All this backstory building up, but Travis is still a truck driver. Not to diss the profession, but I feel like a different job could have made it more dramatic. I don't think the profession affects it at all. I think it's fine having him be a truck driver. I don't think that affects anything. Uh, truck drivers are real people with real, you know, life stories and things too. But for the sake of, like, telling an entertaining story and for, like, a game, they needed to put more emphasis on Travis and his, his story. This should not have had anything to do with Alessa. Like, this... Should not have been a prequel to Silent Hill 1. It should have just been a game about Travis. You know? If they would have just put all of that focus into fleshing out his character more, I don't think it would have been a problem having him be a trucker or anything else. I think the issue just comes down to he wasn't very well fleshed out because they're trying to scramble to, you know, put this game together with very limited time, very limited budget, and make it marketable. And having it tie into the main series being a prequel or, you know, something like that would 
guarantee that you're at least going to get sales from fans who want to play it to see, you know, you you want you, if if someone makes a sequel or a prequel to something you like, you're more likely to to go and get it and play it. So it'll help boost sales numbers. But yeah, if they if they would have been willing to be a little bit more risky with some of this game's uh, ideas instead of just sort of copying over Silent Hill to amnesia trauma, you know, type of stuff again, and just really flesh out Travis's story, it, it could have been a lot better. But yeah, given given this game's development history, like it it is a miracle that we got a game even remotely resembling Silent Hill at all. If I remember correctly, Konami only greenlit the project with the Silent Hill 1 tie-ins, but I imagine they probably only had interesting ideas uh, for an original story. Yeah, Konami at that time apparently had a lot of green light stuff that surrounded that, where that's why Shattered Memories got made. It was originally going to be an original idea, like not a, not a reimagining and not involved with Silent Hill 1. But Sam Barlow and his team just wanted to get started on a game. Like, they just had all these game ideas and wanted to make something and couldn't get anything, you know, to green light through Konami. And they basically found out that Konami had, like, an existing kind of guaranteed green light for a Silent Hill remake idea. So they basically just pitched Shattered Memories as kind of a remake in order for them to just get to start working on a game and start doing something with their ideas. Because they had tried pitching the two original ideas, which the first one was Bram's PD, which was about a police officer who worked for Bram's, very similar to Sybil Bennett in Silent Hill 1, who was dealing with like post-traumatic stress disorder and seeing a therapist, a, a work therapist. So it's like a police, you know, officer from Brams dealing with this trauma and seeing a therapist. So that was originally their 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 first pitch for the game that they wanted to make. And that wound up getting rejected. So then they moved on and retooled it and reshaped it into Silent Hill Cold Heart. And you can find the entire pitch document for Silent Hill Cold Heart out there on the internet. Um, but essentially it was, you know, again, an original storyline about this girl who was supposed to be uh, surviving in a harsh, uh, you know, winter climate in Silent Hill. Um, She's trying to survive, and there were survival elements to it, where you'd have to find food and safe water and warm clothes and shelter, but they still wanted to keep the uh, therapy segments, but then ultimately when Shattered Memories got made, it got greenlit as a remake, so they just kind of had to make it loosely based on Silent Hill 1. And uh, they tried to work in as many of those core ideas from Bram's PD and Cold Heart as they could. So they still kept the winter themes of Cold Heart, and they still kept the therapy segments from Bram's PD to sort of make it into what Shattered Memories was. 
But man, if only we would have gotten Cold Heart. Cold Heart seemed like a really cool idea. I, I would have liked to have seen that game come to fruition rather than Shattered Memories as it was. Uh, we got a note. It is believed a being of tremendous mental energy may become a vessel capable of giving birth to Samael, the god worshipped by this cult. This is where they're officially calling it Samael. Like, uh, they're, they loosely implied the mark of Samael, you know, that that would be the, the name that people who oppose the cult would refer to their demon as, that that's what Dolly refers to it, uh, even though she's not being truthful, she's lying about it in Silent Hill 1. But now Origin straight up saying, Samael is the god worshipped by the cult. Samael's arrival will bring forth paradise on Earth. Something has been added in the margin. Given that this vessel is to be molded with suffering and pain, just what kind of god and what kind of paradise would result? So again, they're drawing from the Silent Hill 3 storyline, where the god born through Alessa's impregnation has to be raised through suffering and pain, has to be molded with suffering and pain. Which always struck me as being something unique to Silent Hill 3. Um, I thought that was specifically because the god was, you know, reincarnated along with Alessa as Heather. So in order to have it grow again inside of her, it had to feed off of that pain. But I thought the whole purpose of the initial ritual was that if it was successful, you wouldn't need the suffering and pain. You would just perform the ritual, and Alessa's body would become the vessel for the new god. Like, if she was going along with it and not resisting by splitting her soul and everything else. Those plot elements that just don't quite work. Here we have the concept art room. This is literally concept art. There's butcher concept art. You can see various monster and character concept art just kind of scattered around. More strange drawings. Some of them are scratched into the walls. Others look like they're painted. That does look like Pyramid Head. There actually is, I, th I believe, some Pyramid Head artwork. I can't remember if that's in here or later. I think one of the smaller pictures actually does show Pyramid Head. Wasn't it implied in Silent Hill 3 that their god is female? It's also directly said in Silent Hill 3 that no religion uh, goes unchanged over time and they're constantly uh, beliefs and things are constantly altered and changed so that is uh, that's essentially the idea is that the belief structure of the cult has changed and shifted over the decades so the way the cult's beliefs were when Dahlia was around and the way it is 17 years you know, later when Claudia has kind of taken charge. They have very different views and very different belief structures. It changes a lot. Someone really flipped out in here. The walls and ceiling are covered in writing and drawings. Hope the management took a deposit on this room.
yeah, there are different sects of the cult. They start breaking that down into a little more detail in some of the supplementar supplementary materials for Silent Hill 4. This door is wrapped up tight with police tape and the lock has been broken off. Can't open it. So ultimately, that's what our goal is throughout the motel. We just need to get the key to that room. laundry machines is busted again. The weird guy in Cleopatra was shouting at me, wanted me to go fix it, but I couldn't leave the reception. Anyhow, after getting all red in the face, the fella just ran off. Hasn't been back since. Up and drove off. Could you take a look at the machine when you get a minute? Take a token in it and do the reset thing. Set it to low spin, 60 wash, drain, then pre-rinse. So this is actually a puzzle. We have to figure out how to use the fucking laundry laundry machine. Set it to low spin, 60 wash, drain, and then pre-rinse. Put anything you found inside the lost and found. Thanks, Ed. Redeemer ammo. We have yet another gun that we haven't even picked up just yet. The heavy duty vice attached to the bench. We're gonna have to use that to break something. Again, kind of similar to Silent Hill 3, break, using a vice to break the uh, walnut. A pow. Are you planning out any first playthroughs for the near future? I know some Bluebird titles were on the table. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be playing a lot of stuff for the first time because um, I'm going to just play as many games that the developers making new Silent Hill games uh, have, have already made. Just for the sake of research. Uh, I want to play everything else the people who are making Townfall, you know, for example, made. And the people who are making Silent Hill F. Um, so some of some of them have games that I've played. Like, obviously, with Bloober Team, I've played Layers of Fear and Layers of Fear 2. But I didn't play any of their other games because I didn't like the Layers of Fear games. So, at, at some point, yes. But I don't have, like, a, a date or Every anything when I'm planning on doing that. It's not enough. I can't be there for him. There's too much pain in this world without you. That thing that stole your body. It had the right idea. We can see Richard is starting to buy into this whole... That thing that stole your body. Like, believing that his wife, Helen, is straight up possessed by a demon that's allowing her to to walk in and out of mirrors and in and out of the other world and that somehow this demon's like carried on into Travis but we're slowly piecing together the date there was a rotary calendar at the beginning and we can see there the day uh, 12 is circled but we don't know the month or year yet so for now, we're just keeping the 12 in mind. Dirty bathtubs. Seal of Metatron tattoo or Halo of the Sun tattoo? Uh... If you're asking if I have either, I don't have either. I don't I don't have any Silent Hill tattoos yet. If you're asking which I would prefer, uh neither. Also, still my answer. 
I have plans to get a Silent Hill tattoo, but those are the two most like cliched Silent Hill fan tattoos. So I don't think I would want to get something that a ton of other people have. Personally, I was thinking about getting a tattoo of the Eye of Night uh, tarot card from Silent Hill 3. It's just a really neat looking tarot card that was made up for Silent Hill 3. The cool design, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone have a tattoo of it. Oh. If you listen closely here, you can uh, you can hear Kaufman's voice and Lisa giggling, laughing. That's not a Silent Hill tattoo then, it's a tarot tattoo. But it's not a tarot card that exists. It's a tarot card that was specifically made up for a Silent Hill 3 puzzle. It, it doesn't exist anywhere else. Except for in a Silent Hill game. Lisa's cardigan hanging on a rack back there. But yeah, the implication here is that Lisa and Kaufman are downstairs having sex. And Travis is about to interrupt. Well, not really interrupt. It seems like they were... Uh, Wrapping up anyway. Oh, we got a key. And there are photos of Body's cause of death shotgun. Where it's implied that there's like this creepy motel owner who's using these uh, peepholes to spy on all of the people staying in his rooms, including the butcher. But then he's also taking photos of people who've, like, committed suicide uh, or died in his motel. And if you actually stop watching where the butcher is and then go back to it, he's immediately gone. Picked up the office key, cupped metal key, manager's office written on the tag. Be brave, get a tattoo of James Sunderland's new face from the remake. I mean, all 12 of his new faces. Because every single scene in the trailer looks like a completely different model. <laughs> well, that's bad. That's bad. Let me go. Let me run. If anyone has a tattoo of the final boss in Silent Hill 3? Maybe. Can't say I've ever seen a picture of what of that, but 
Possibly. Wouldn't be too surprising. Just stunlock me directly into a QTE attack. Cheap fucking boss. Or not even boss, just enemy. Hey, Trash Corner. Ever heard of Fear and Hunger? Have a feeling you'd like the sequel, Termina. Nope, not familiar with what any of that is. Although, usually, I, I always have to warn people, uh, I'm, I'm bitter and jaded and hard to please, and people are always really upset when they recommend stuff to me, and then I hate it. So, just as a, just as a heads up. It doesn't always happen, but a lot of the times. Because for a long time, that, that was just like the running thing on my channel. Everyone was like, no, you should play The Evil Within. I think you'll love it. And then I hated it. Everyone was like, Nub, you should play Layers of Fear. And I hated it. Visage. Hated it. Tormented Souls. Definitely didn't like it as much as people... Like, there's, a, there's things that I like about Tormented Souls, but it's very middling. It's, very, it's like a 5 out of 10. Maybe a 4 out of 10. Not great. In fact, one of the big things that I issues that I had with Tormented Souls was everyone was like, hey, it's a lot like classic Resident Evil. It's a lot like classic Silent Hill. You'll love it. And the two Silent Hill games that it borrows the most from are this game, Silent Hill Origins, which is one of my least favorite Silent Hill games, and Silent Hill Downpour, one of my other least favorite Silent Hill games. So, yeah. Usually when people come in and they're like, hey, Nub, you should check out Blank. I think you'll love it. I, I probably won't. Not trying to... Not, not trying to put you down or anything. But I just don't want people to get their expectations up and then get their feelings hurt when I don't like things. <laughs> what did it borrow from Downpour? Tormented Souls? Guys in gas masks in with giant hammers chasing you around as enemies right before you get to the final boss where you have to run around to a, a lot of corners and like kill it through a gimmicky way like literally the exact same final boss from downpour and bogeymen and like and from origins like one of the first puzzles that you do is go through a mirror and get fake uh body parts to put into a body and I'm like oh god it's fucking origins yeah sorry tormented souls it was, it was okay at times and then frustrating and poor at others anyway we're not talking about tormented souls we're playing Silent Hill Origins the other disappointing game on a long list of things I don't like Christ alive one of the cleaners called me over said that there was something wrong with room 500 Door was open. Inside, sweet Jesus. Stench made me puke. The kid man, the kid, just stood there. They said he'd been there for ten hours. I ended up crying my eyes out. Shit like this shouldn't happen. The police have got the room locked up for now. I'm going home. So this guy, one of the staff members for the, the motel here, basically came across the Grady room. Uh, where Travis and his father, Richard, were staying. And essentially, Travis stayed behind to play pinball while Richard Grady went back to their hotel room and killed himself. He hung himself. And whenever Travis returned to the room later on and saw that his dad was already dead, he apparently just stood there and stared at him for 10 hours before someone came on the came by the room to to check on him and then this happened so this guy was thrown up traumatized just by seeing what happened to Travis let alone how fucked up Travis must be 
Lots of useless files. Broke. Stuffed animals. This kind of thing makes me feel bad. Aw, poor Travis. Let me get this assault rifle ammo. here, but I'm going to run and see what's in this corner. Nothing. Fucking random confederate flag room. Fucking shooting. And I'm just stun locked. Please. Ah, this fucking enemy. Man, today's gonna be a rough one. It's Monday, so I had initially planned on doing Book of Memories after this. But uh, I might skip it do that today. That might be a little bit too much for me after a full day of Origins. <laughs> An old closet. Random plastic crate. Don't think you should put yourself through two of your least favorite things in one day. <laughs> I, I mean, it's definitely not the first time. Wouldn't be the first time that I've done that. I mean, we've done 24-hour marathons where we played everything, including Book of Memories and... This and Downpour. like Travis wants to interact with that. There it is. Oh, and we picked up the Redeemer. Another gun. Look at all these guns. Can you tell that this game was originally going to be in a much more action-y Resident Evil style game? Considering they have all these different types of guns. A heavy, reliable six-shooter has Redeemer etched on its side. Classic 44 hand cannon. This provides more than enough bang for my buck. Now we break all of the icons. We turn everything into a redeemer. Oh, I need to uh, heal up. What's the pick on the Redeemer grip? Great question. You do get a pretty good look at it. Looks almost looks a bit like Cheryl. Yeah, it does. It's kind of similar to Cheryl. Kind of similar to Mary. Double check my notes and see if I actually had anything on that. Huh. 
Not that it helps with the uh, helps the game with it being something relevant. Just thought it was a weird detail. No, you're totally right. It is it is an interesting little detail. Apparently that uh, graphic of the woman is only on the PS2 version. It's not in the PSP version. But aside from that, it doesn't... I don't have any notes on specifically who that is. Or if it's taken from, like, an actual painting or anything like that. But that's my... that's my only note on the Redeemer image. <laughs> is it's only on the PS2 version. Yeah, it's like Richard Braintree's tie. Like, that looks really cool. Is it from something? And they're just... Is it specific to, to mean something? I don't know, it's just weird and stands out. been seeing the white van periodically throughout the game. I was joking that the Eddie's van like model I think shows up in more Silent Hill games than anything else. I think it's like the most reused asset. monster. One of the two backs. Someone's gone to town on it with a knife. Just trash. This is it. All this build up. They've been talking about the butcher. The, per the, the person who worked at the theater saw the butcher. We keep getting all these hints to the butcher. Seeing him mutilate all these monsters. them piggy squeal. I like how Travis just pokes his head back around like, oh, you didn't see me. how easily Travis picks up his knife. Look how huge this knife is. One hand. <laughs> he just lifts it up. And that's it. All this build up 
All this suspense. What's the butcher? Who's the butcher? What does the butcher represent? Why did this guy see the butcher? Why did this person see the butcher? Why is there a whole room with photographs and artwork dedicated to the butcher? Oh, you just kill him. You just, you just walk in there and kill him. He simply butches. To my absent wife. I know that whatever hell I am enduring, yours is worse, but damn it, this is so hard. It's like you're dead, but you're not. The Helen I loved is gone, but your body is still here. I have slept alone for the last two years. I've become so bitter, so sleazy. I'm no father to Travis. I can't even look at him some days. What is it going to take to bring you back? Yours forever, Richard. So that's sort of your implication to Richard showing up at this motel and like sleeping with sleazy sleuths. At least that's that's the idea that you get. And gives some context to the two backs monster design. I don't know any of the songs on this jukebox. Don't believe you. We've got the laundromat over here. Gonna be the first part of a puzzle. So it's a guide to the symbols before you operate your washer. The true the two transit brackets. I'm like trying to read the paper in the background. Must not operate the machine with these brackets in place. The main thing you need is the guide to the symbols. Pre-rinse, soak, 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree wash. Low spin, heavy spin, drain. So we know what each symbol uh, represents, what function it represents on the washing machine. And we had... Nope. The janitor's note. Laundry machine. Do the reset thing. Low spin, 60. Drain, pre-rinse. Low spin, 60. Drain, pre-rinse. So, low spin. Circle with a dot. That's a titty. 60 degree wash. A bucket with water with two dots. Drain looks like a packet of ramen noodles, and then pre-rinse. Not quite a full circle with a dot. A fractured titty. So titty, two dot bucket, ramen noodles, fractured titty. But we need a coin. Need a coin. The laundry machine won't open, but I can see something metal inside. The machine is turned off. Now it's unlocked. Right, that leads back out to the other side from before we uh, fought the butcher. No, re no reason to go back. You get the coin, which is right around here. 
game room. Also, here is five pool cues that I'm going to pick up and put in my back pocket for later use. Let's read the item description once we scroll through 500 other things we've picked up. I don't think we looked at the iron room. Wait. I use these to tie down scenery and other theater stuff. Very heavy. A spear. We did pick up an actual spear. This is no prop. It's a genuine sharp spear made for herding. Not hunting, hurting. And pool cue. Long, slender pool cue. Looks like it's seen plenty of action. Are we killing Satan with a toaster? We're gonna try. Gonna try. One of these days, I'll figure out the perfect combination. Whoa! Did you see that speed tech? Hold on. How did that happen? How did I just clip on up through there? You missed it? Oh, I'm sure someone's going to clip it. I'll go back and highlight it if nobody does. The nub skip? Oh, if this gets used in speedruns, it can can we call it the nub skip? Dude, how did that even work? I was like facing away from it. And it just popped me up there. Anyway, in and out of inventory. Oh, was that it? Yeah, because I was looking at the, the pool queue. Sorry, this is... This is by far the most interesting thing in this game to me right now. Is the fact that I hopped up this little ledge. And if that's something that can be replicated in other places. That could be like. Huge for the speedrunning community. For the, for the six other people that run this game. There's actually more people than that. They run Origins. Okay. I'll I'll have to go back and mess with that some more. I don't want to smoke right now. Cigarette machine over there. smoke right now. The pinball machine isn't working, so we've got all these all these pinball machines here. There's uh, Farrah Fawcett on this particular one. They changed these machines. This is something else that's different from the PSP version to the PS2 version. Is uh is they change the artwork and the designs on these machines. So for the PS2 version, you get Ferret, Ferret Fawcett. Ferret Fawcett. Pinball machine isn't working. I don't think it's switched on. Pinball is broken. But we do get a token. 
Oh, did you clip it, Techie? Uh, sorry, I've got links disabled. Stupid bots ruin everything. Did too. Guess it didn't show. Popped it in the Silent Hill Discord. Cool. Good. I'll check that out later. Yeah, definitely something I'll go and mess with again. It it always shocks me after so many years. Every yes. once in a while, something even minor like that can be uh, it's okay. really interesting. I just want to play the pinball. Sure. There. I'm going back to the room for a little while. Wait for me here. No inventory shenanigans, just running. Well, I said I'll worry about that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll be messing with this stuff off stream. But uh, we got a little bit more there with uh, Richard Grady. Um, Travis just wanted to play some pinball. Borrowed some money from his dad. Richard's basically just saying I'm gonna go back to the room for a while wait for me here and uh, that's when he takes that opportunity to go back to the room and uh, takes his own life oh my god why my controller is breaking again just like it did earlier okay. um, I think I'm gonna have to do what I did before, make a save state. Reset the emulator. Plug my controller back in. There we go. Okay, crisis averted. I I just don't know what's wrong with my computer. I don't know why it keeps doing this weird shit. Token with laundromat written on it. Small metal token for use in a laundromat. John O'Hara. It says across the top. I don't think I ever really paid attention to the name. Is that a reference to something? John O'Hara. The writer. One of America's most prolific writers of short stories, credited with helping to invent the New Yorker magazine short story style. Became a best-selling novelist before the age of 30. With appointment in Samara and Butterfield 8. Okay. So that's definitely a reference. All right, we've got our token. We know what sequence we need to do to reset the laundry uh, washing machine. Put the token in the laundromat. Machine turns on. So it was... 
my god. The dial will go crazy with the analog stick. Better to use the D-pad. bucket ramen noodle. Cleopatra key. A key with Cleopatra written on its snake keychain. Has a cute snake pattern keychain. That is pretty cute. Hope people can do something with it. I mean, you never know. I, I come across all sorts of weird little glitches and, and things like that in games. And I always get excited, like, maybe this will be useful for something. Most of the time it's not, but you never know. What gun are you holding? Uh, service pistol? Service pistol. Something's blocking the door. I can't open it. key room, but uh, before we go straight in there, let's go around, check all these rooms, kill this wiggly guy back here, on anything. Like how there's not even a stand or anything on this side of the room. The TV sitting on the floor. Oh, literally nothing in this room. Wait, nothing useful here. Cool. Why does this exist? to the Cleopatra room. Grab that portable TV. Closet won't open. Old magazines. Rifle bullets. There was no floor textures below. That's fine. We don't need floor textures. Nothing useful. Cause of death, snake bite. see a nude woman, presumably dead, although I don't know how literal these cause of death things are, because the first one says shotgun, and it's very clearly somebody who died getting shot with a shotgun. Here, I mean, there's blood on the bed, blood on the floor, but I don't know if it literally means snake bite, uh, or if that's a reference to something else. Documents and bottles and things over here. 
And again, we can hear voices coming from the room below. Uh, Lisa and Kaufman's voice. Bottom of the tub is broken and opens into the room below. Jump down. up where you're not wanted, Mr. Grady. Isn't it time you left town? I can't. Try harder. <laughs> Travis made like a weird face. Did you see that? It, it was for like a frame. Right before it cut from that cutscene with Kaufman to, uh, back to the gameplay he like squinted his eyes and then his face like reset to neutral so it looked like his eyes bugged out that was weird what does having Lisa and Kaufman bang add to the story uh, actually nothing in fact it kind of detracts a lot from their story in Silent Hill 1 the fact that she was like a good nurse and was just doing her job, started getting weirded out. Hoffman manipulated her, got her addicted to the drugs, but adding the like sexual, seedy sexual relationship between them, I guess it's just to kind of, I don't know, emphasize how much of a creep Kaufman is, but it's hard to tell how much Lisa's going along with it based on the reactions. I don't know. It, it doesn't really help. It doesn't really add much of anything. It's, it's, this whole game is unnecessary. It shouldn't add anything to Silent Hill 1. They should have just not had any Silent Hill 1 storyline aspects at all. And just focused on Travis. White powder. I try to stay away from this type of thing. That is good old PTV. The drug in uh, Silent Hill 1 that's manufactured from uh, White Claudia. God, I love when the inventory bugs out and you just don't read a note or see an item. Kaufman. We are almost ready, but must hurry. I sense our hold on her power weakening. I worry that she draws strength from the core I hold. I will leave it behind, hidden in this darkness. It will be safe. Brady is unlikely to return here. He is still running around town chasing after ghosts. He is ignorant of the bigger picture anyway. And he really kind of is. He's running around dealing with all this trauma, childhood trauma, that he should already have dealt with, and he's at the very least already aware of. And he's not really paying as much attention to, like, what's going on with Alessa, these pieces of the flowers that he's finding. He's, he's kind of more caught up in all this, all this personal stuff. I will wait for you here. Finish your business and join me soon. The time approaches, the Flaros is shattered, thrown to the wind, and her will is still buried deep in a sleeping mind. This time, the ritual will succeed. Dahlia. There's so much with this. So, <clears throat> why is she worried about Grady? Like, Travis walking around dealing with his trauma. I guess she realizes at this point that Alessa is is helping him or or using him to sort of help her. And Dahlia has been leaving those notes kind of in your path where he's like, don't trust her, trying to get Travis to, to not listen to Alessa and not go along with all this. Um, 
The Flaros is shattered, thrown to the wind. So apparently she's the one who split the Flaros, but she uses the Flaros in Silent Hill 1 to break Alessa's barrier. Like, so why is she shattering it in this game? And her will is still buried deep in a sleeping mind. Again, it's like the whole sleeping mind thing and Alessa's nightmare thing happens because Alessa has to endure this for seven years. But in the context of this game, it's been like a day. And Dahlia's like, her will is still buried deep in her sleeping mind. Like, she's, she was on fire yesterday. It's not like she's been locked up in the hospital for seven years the way that it was when you get to the events of Silent Hill 1. And then the last line, as, as if I, ha I don't have enough issues with this, and then the last line, this time the ritual will succeed. This time? When did you do it before? In... And again, in Silent Hill 1, there's like an exact moment where Dahlia conceives the plan to do this. Like in Silent Hill 1, Cheryl is trying to explain to her mother Dahlia, I just want to live with you. I don't want to be a part of this ritual. And Dahlia Gillespie's like, oh, I could have done this all myself. I didn't realize. I can just use my own daughter and force her against her will to be the mother of God and, and take part in this ritual. I can force this to happen. Dahlia comes to that realization in Silent Hill 1. I mean, like, we see a flashback to the moment where she realizes it. So how could there be a, a previous time where this ritual failed if the first time Dahlia ever thought to do it is when it happens in Silent Hill 1. Game don't make no sense. <laughs> this is what happens when they have to remake an entire game. Sam Barlow has to write everything in a week when he didn't even want to make a prequel in the first place. He got a typewriter. I'll throw it at Satan. All right. Hey, look, a mirror. That's a camera angle. You can get very close to Travis. Look at that flashlight. We are inside of his chest. Wait, can we get the view? Can we get the view where we see the terrifying inside of his head moment? Because you can absolutely see in some certain camera angles, it, the camera will like clip inside Travis's model and his face is like terrifying when you're looking at it from inside. Nah, not quite, not quite at, on this camera. Again, encountering the two backs in the other world version of the room where we just saw Lisa and Kaufman finish up after after banging. So clear representation there. Cause of death overdose. And it even looks like Lisa in the photo very naked Lisa, but 
the face and hair look like Lisa, and that's what it's implied Lisa dies of in Silent Hill 1, is an overdo overdose of the PTB drug. At least, uh, it seems that way. That Kaufman forced it. Was using the PTV to, to get her addicted and control her. When uh, all she wanted to do was quit. It was like, I tried to take care of Alessa. Shit started getting weird. Just want to quit. And Kaufman wasn't letting that happen. Riffle ammo. Just imagine the writers of this replaying Silent Hill 1 in a very rushed manner. Just to get the gist of the story. That's kind of what it feels like at times. It's like someone just kind of did a really quick and loose, not very thorough playthrough of Silent Hill 1. It's like, all right. You have 24 hours to <laughs> come up with a prequel to that story. Go. Creepy room. Not much else in here. Bad thing is I could actually see that happening. See, it, it's hard to tell because like in, in interviews and stuff, uh, Sam Barlow, he seems like a really cool dude. And he seems like a really dedicated, you know, game developer who cares about, like, what he's working on and, like, wants to try and make stuff as good as it can be. A lot of other directors in his position, like, when they were working on that first version of the game and it was action-y, over-the-shoulder, and based on TV show scrubs, like, plenty of other game directors out there would have just looked at that and said, okay, I guess that's what you want to make. And they wouldn't have challenged it at all. So the fact that he even challenged that and said, this would be embarrassing if we release it, like, I will risk everything on this project to redo it all with the remaining time and budget with a different team, um, shows that he at least gave a shit. So I, I don't think it's as, you know it's as bad or, or anything from that perspective. I think that he legitimately enjoys Silent Hill and, and cared about the project, but he just didn't have the time to, to flesh it out and get a lot of the details right. Dagger. Looks like an ornament, but it's blade cuts like the real thing. Very similar to the uh, ceremonial dagger in Homecoming. In its uh, design. Which I guess in itself is kind of similar to the Silent Hill 1 uh, dagger of Melchior. got a couple different places we got to go look at the pool before we go upstairs god all the item pickups are just starting to zoom past the jeweled heart. When I shake it, I can hear something rattling around inside. 
But yeah, very, very reminiscent of the uh, the walnut that you pick up in Silent Hill 3. Yeah, the pool is shaped like a heart. The, the jewel is heart-shaped. So just in case you don't get the symbolism, it represents Richard Grady's heart. Because he was heartbroken about his wife being possessed by a demon and losing her mind and trying to kill their son. Can I not interact with this? Cool. Weird how Travis can't just shoot it open. We had this discussion before, but yeah. There's, there's a lot of things that... I mean, you, you have to suspend your belief because video game logic. There's so many puzzles and situations in Silent Hill that could be completely avoided. If they were just aware of how to utilize the things in their inventory. Like, oh, here's this thing. I I need to use the the power of the vice to smash it open. It's like, no, you have like eight different high-powered rifles in your bag. Like in your back pocket. You could probably just shoot it open. In fact, you could probably just shoot open any locked doors, <laughs> you know. The gun would solve a lot of problems that, uh, that the game kind of puts in your way. Like, here's a puzzle. What's the solution? Shoot the lock. Shoot the doorknob off. Just shoot a giant hole in the door itself. The same way that there's always like, oh, here's a key. It's just out of reach. Like, you have an IV drip in your back pocket. You have a, a piece of wood. You have a baton. You have a katana. There's a key in the boiling water in the bathtub. Oh, no. What will I do? I don't have four dozen long stick-shaped objects that could very easily fish the key out. I guess I'll just flush it down three floors and go through the mirror to the other world in order to pick it up instead of just like poking it with a stick and getting it out of the hot water. Yeah, video game logic. It's one of those things that, like, I'm, I I tend to be not too critical of it, because I get it. Like, there's there's a certain amount of suspension of belief with, with logic and things for the sake of making puzzles and obstacles and, and things like that work in a game. But when it's something that's a little bit too, I don't know, weird or... Obtuse. Then yeah, it, it kind of sticks out as like, why can't you just do this? Cause of death, stabbing. You have been stabbed. There's a lot of these things. That uh, as as we pick them up, for some reason, the inventory just bugs out, and you wind up skipping the text and image and everything of whatever you just picked up. Meat cleaver, pick it up. Who dies from stabbing? I think the photographer meant blood loss.
Eh, splitting hairs. Also, it's not very specific who any of these people are supposed to be. And again, there's different implications. There's there's some people who who theorize that because of the bad ending, Travis himself is the butcher, and these are all victims, people that Travis has killed. Uh, some people think that it was Travis's father, that he was dealing with all of these, uh, basically losing his mind because of Helen, uh, losing Helen and sort of losing his family, being driven to suicide, and that he was sleeping with these women in the motel and then killing them. There's a ragged hole here that drops down into the room below. Jump down. Dark. That's how a lot of Silent Hill stuff is. This game is not even especially dark with its themes compared to, like, Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2... Silent Hill 2 and the story behind Angela Orozco is one of the things that makes me the most concerned about Bloober Team's remake. Because it's such a dark, difficult subject matter that I really don't see Bloober Team handling it very well. A broken hole in the wall here. Go through. Afraid of them Disneyfying it? I'm afraid they might just omit Angela's backstory altogether. Like, for example, when Konami made the uh, the Silent Hill 2 Pachi slot, they remade a bunch of cutscenes and elements and stuff based on, you know, stuff in uh in silent hill 2 like obviously they brought back eddie they brought back laura they brought back all these characters do you know who got left out of the pachi slot angela and i think that's for a very specific reason being some more split open uh patient demons hanging in that room Yeah, that's the other extreme that they might go to, Yami, is not necessarily disnifying it or omitting it, but just being really insensitive about it and portraying it in a really bad way, being distasteful about it. Anyway, that's speculation on a game that remains to be seen. For now, there's Origins, and we've got another letter. Uh, written by Richard Grady to a ghost. There's no pretending now, is there? We both know that thing at Cedar Grove isn't you. You died the day you tried to kill our son. When I brought your gift today, when you smashed it, I finally woke up. I've been dreaming all these years, hitting myself that you'll be right one day. The Helen I loved is dead. I try to remember how it was all those years ago today when we got married. I can't remember anymore. I'm tired. I know Travis will be fine on his own. I'm going to see you again, Helen. Yours in forever, Richard. So that's Richard's suicide note. That l The fact that Travis is even mentioned at all, he's like a little afterthought there at the end. He'll be fine on his own. He's ten... His mother is locked up in a sanitarium. I'm about to com I'm his father. I'm about to commit suicide. Travis is 10 years old. He'll be fine. What ending are you going for? This will only be the good ending. The normal ending. Uh, this game only has two other alternate endings, and both of them are New Game Plus only. So... It is impossible to get the bad ending or the UFO ending on a first playthrough. You'll always get the good ending first. Locked. So that's Richard Grady's room, Travis Grady's room. 
there. Last place that they spent any time together. Is it really a good ending, though? I mean, it, we watch it, and then it means I'm done playing Origins, so that's pretty good. Origins stopping is a pretty good ending to me. Got the jeweled heart. Jeweled heart. We can go and smash this in the vice. Pardon me. Use him walk. Yo, what's up, Enigma? Wow, this actually looks kind of great upscaled. You know, it took a, a bit of really messing around with PCSX2 and the big the big difference that I'm noticing is the uh, the dev build using the whatever it's called the the night release build or whatever they call it for PCSX2 basically the the not necessarily stable dev release build uh, fixes so many of the issues that I was having uh with visual aspects of this game. Obviously, <laughs> good example right there, there's still some weird stuff with like shadows every once in a while, like this. But uh, yeah, PCSX2 dev build, most recent dev build. And uh, doing some bump, basic, you know, bump up the brightness. Origins PS2 version, absolutely, you need to crank up shaders and brightness in PCSX2 to account for how dark this game is naturally, but uh, with the right settings, this is a pretty, pretty good looking game, this PS2 port for Origins, not bad. It's still weird, but that's just Origins, like, the fact that it is not terrible looking when you consider it's a PSP port and they changed all the textures and up a bunch of stuff. But it's still not as good as like Silent Hill 3 <laughs> or 4 visually that came out three years, four years earlier. Now, there's a heavy duty vice attached to the bench. Let's smash Jeweled Heart. Shattered Memories runs a lot better on Dolphin nightly builds now than it did last year. I still need to mess around with Shattered Memories on Dolphin more, uh, especially on the new dev builds. Mash open the jeweled heart. There's something inside. A wedding ring. I think the ring has something engraved on its inside. The wedding ring has a message engraved on its band. It reads... To my June bride, love forever, Richard. So now we're piecing together the date, uh, which is when they were married. So we saw the date circled on the calendar in the cutscene with um, Richard Grady earlier, which was the tw the day twelve on the on the calendar. Now we have June. So we've got the month, we've got the day, and we have the year. So I mentioned way back at the start of the playthrough that the lucky quarter in the inventory would be used for a puzzle near the end of the game. Well, here we are near the end of the game, and the year that's scratched into the lucky quarter, 61, is the last piece of the date that we need. So... There is our solution for the rotary calendar. We need to go plug in the wedding anniversary date for Travis Grady's parents. 
The heart has been broken. There's nothing useful left. And that is definitely worded that way very specifically, because that's the idea, is that Richard Grady's heart was broken, and that there was nothing useful of him left, and he gave up. He gave up on life. Don't hurt me. We're actually still good on health. Uh, so yeah, we've got the ring, we've got the solution to the rotary puzzle. So let's go back to the front office. Wish the Duck Station people would make a PS2 emulator. They did such a great job with Duck Station. I wish they would make an emulator for everything. But it is really, really nice to see how far emulation has already come. Because it was not that long ago that if you were trying to emulate anything newer than like 8-bit or 16-bit like you just could not get a good experience through emulation like you could technically get stuff to work just well enough that you could play through a game but it was like noticeably a lesser experience compared to playing it on console whereas now there's been such great strides made with uh with emulation for newer consoles and even older consoles to get stuff to run better and smoother where it's legitimately some of the preferred ways to play a lot of consoles and a lot of games is through emulation with like up res and widescreen and all that like if you get a PS2 emulator get get PCSX2 nightly build and play Silent Hill 2 and 3 with the widescreen mod turned on and you're definitely going to have a way better experience than you'd ever get from like HD collection you know like an official re-release that's supposed to be better rotary calendar oops and the month only rotates up to nine sure January, February, March, April, May, June. My June Bride. We had the 12th circled. And 1961, based on the year scratched on the uh, lucky coin. And with the date set, a secret compartment opens in the calendar. There's an empty circular depression. Wedding ring goes in. Something dropped down on the keyboard behind me. The room 500 key. So we've got the key to the room that Travis and his father Richard stayed in. Let's head back. Actually, let's save our game, too. couple different ways we can go back to that room. I think technically it's faster to come in here, use the mirror. And run over there. This 
way. Bright light, my eyes. Child Travis. <laughs> Tiny Wolf, thank you so much for the $9.69. Nice. Laughs in Kenku. Daddy? <laughs> we'll see who's laughing when you experience tragic D&D storytelling this weekend. Thank you, Tiny Wolf. Use the room 500 key. Hey guys, remember super long impossible staircases? Remember Silent Hill 2? Although this one is not nearly as long of a run from top to bottom as the one in Silent Hill 2. Now we get Travis's flashback to Dad. when his father committed suicide in front of him. I won the game. I still got a quarter left. Or rather, quarter? he came back to the hotel room after his Daddy. father had already committed suicide. He's daddy. I'm not sleeping, son. But I don't think it happened like this. I wasn't sleeping. Why did you stand there for so long? It wasn't right. It wasn't He's right. Daddy. It wasn't healthy, son. What the fuck is wrong with you, Travis? Daddy, this is insane. Time you faced up to what happened. Your mother and I will see you in heaven, son. Uh, Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder. Oh my god, a delicious dinner placed in front of me. I'm gonna get hit. I was distracted by food. Thank you. I love you. Very, very tasty looking pasta in front of me now. But we need to hurry up and kill Travis's daddy. The name of this boss, by the way, is Sad Daddy. Thought he meant the monster look? <laughs> no, no, no. Sad Daddy looking like a snack. No, I have actual... Spaghetti and meatball. Placed right in front of me. Uh, let's give him the shotgun. Oh, are, you, are you dead? He's dead. It's hard to tell sometimes if that's one of his attacks and or his death animation because they kind of look similar. I got the truth piece. How is this even possible? Here it is. Dad, how could he do that to himself? Why won't you let me forget? Why are you doing this to me? Come out. Come out. I've got your your thing for you <laughs> I got your thing for you happy you dug up my parents what now when do we get to look inside your sick little mind
This isn't right. Yeah, no shit. There's a lot of things not right. It's Silent Hill Origins. But that's okay, because we have beautiful Akira Yamaoka piano to distract us. Tetrahedron with the word truth engraved on its side. Yeah, basically the same description for every piece. One ampule. Is that all my healing? Two first aid kits. Yeah, we should be fine. Plus we're about to pick up a few more on the way to the last boss here. Like how she just whips out the sirens like a trump card every time. She never says anything. Like, she speaks in siren. Whenever Alessa wants to speak to you, it just sounds like air raid siren. The gurney has been used recently. It's stained with soot and blood. That's Alessa's gurney. She was being moved. Alt rifle ammo, another ampule. Storage boxes covered by old, dirty sheets. We got a big old glowing halo of the sun and a big old wrench. Anything else cool in here? I think that's it. I got the present piece. This is the last one. This is the last one. So we take the present piece and we have to connect all the other pieces to it. And it's basically just a match the shapes game. All you have to do is find the piece that matches all of the shapes. on each side so like one side both sides here have the little cross with the uh crosses with the circles uh but this one does not match crosses with circles nope I had it right the first time. Cross with circle. It looks like bugs with antennas to me. Centipedes with little legs. So there. That one is lined up. Not that one. Bugs. Legs. Circles with curved lines. Got that one. Crosses, bugs. Got it. There it is. <laughs> and there was a frame of Travis standing there with the flowers not actually in his hand. Oh, this is kind of what we see the flowers do in Silent Hill 1. Shoots a beam that breaks through Alessa's barrier. Now it's more like a flashbang. And Alessa just shows up. You're here. Like it summoned her. Wait! You opened the box. I came. Al 
Alessa's just a Cenobite. She's just a Cenobite in this. Did they just make Alessa into the movie one where she's an evil, creepy child? Well, when the PSP version of this game came out, it was really, really close with the movie release. Let me double check on the actual exact release dates here. Origins uh, was November 6th, 2007. And the Silent Hill movie was 2006, April 21st, 2006. So the movie had been out, you know, for like a year. And this one definitely took like some influence from it. Not nearly as much as Homecoming. Homecoming took a lot from the movie. But yeah, they definitely use a lot of the, uh, the movie's idea of Alessa being this sort of like vengeful devil. getting her revenge on the cultists who burned her. Whereas that was like, not, not a thing in Silent Hill 1. She, again, she's not, she's not Sadako. She's not an Onryo. She's not, she's not a rage demon. save point. Last little running segment of the game. And then we get to throw a toaster at Satan. What have you done? You broke the spell. Now she is free. I just want to end this. I thought that's what she wanted too. I want out. Can you help me? You want out? Ha <laughs> ha! Far too late for that. Even with your misguided help, she can't stop us now. Ceremony begins soon. Finally, she will birth God! Here she comes. Look upon what you have wrought! God damn it, this is Rachel's fault. I was keeping my fingers crossed that it wouldn't, because the game does have a chance to softlock there. I didn't say anything. Rachel had to say, will it softlock Kappa in chat? And then it happened. So, you know, fuck you. Because I haven't had to deal with enough technical problems trying to get through this fucking story playthrough. This part is cursed. My life is cursed. My life as a Silent Hill story streamer is just not functional anymore. I can't get through a story playthrough of a Silent Hill game anymore without fucking tech issues. Fucking everything up. Ah, damn it, dude. Legitimately frustrating. That cutscene is cursed in general. Like, it, it is just a known issue that the game can just completely fuck up and softlock there trying to load that last FMV.
I'm just going to skip and see if it loads the next part. There we go. So there's your big movie influenced scene. And the the interesting thing about those, like the pre-rendered FMVs like that, um, those are some of the last things that were kept from that first version of Origins that got scrapped. Uh, the, those FMV sequences, they were too expensive to just not use. Um, but they also didn't have the time and budget to make new ones. So those are some of the only things that got kept. Got the child's map. Go here. Just, there you go. Go there. At least they're making it simple for you. Still playing PS2 version or is this PSP? No, this is still PS2. I didn't randomly switch versions in the middle of the story playthrough just to fuck with people. This is still PCSX2. PS2 emulation. say the ambient music is kind of good here. It definitely has that Silent Hill 1 heavier industrial vibe to it. Wow, that QTE attack. It was not even like facing me. That was so weird. game still looks good you think i think overall it's it's okay it's not the most impressive thing but considering everything i know about its development the fact that it was like you know a psp game that got ported with a few new textures and things um it's definitely not bad for what it is And this, like, ending sequence, this last, like, Otherworld segment uh, with all the darkness around is, is visually not, not bad. It's not far off. This game has its, its moments here and there where it kind of manages to mimic that Silent Hill aesthetic. The Yamaoka music really helps. It's doing a lot of the, the heavy carrying for keeping that effect. By the way, there was the Green Lion sign. Green Lion Antiques. So this stairwell leading down to this door, this is the infamous uh, romper skip stairs from uh, Silent Hill 1, where you would be descending down into the uh the antique store so whenever somebody if you watch people speed run silent hill one and they do the romper skip to get out of bounds in origins uh this is that same spot this is where harry would clip out 
Yeah, that Dutch angle, that super tilted camera angle. Just some packing cases. Laros device, origin unknown. The device is first mentioned in the poetry of Chang Qian, an advisor to members of the early Han dynasty. In one of the tracks, Chang Qian jokes he trapped a demon inside his three-sided box. When Chang Qian died in battle, uh, excuse me, died in a, where, how did I get battle? Died in a terrible fire at the Imperial Palace in 115 BC, the device appeared lost. It was later rumored to be in the possession of Lutheran monk M.G. Lewis, who in 1796 spoke of its ability to control and amplify thought. It was Lewis who linked it not to a demon, but to God himself, claiming it was a weapon left by angels as a force for good. So this is the throwaway note. For, for the fans like me who are like, wait a minute, the Flower Rose is in Silent Hill 1, I know what the Flower Rose is, I know what the Flower Rose does, why is it doing something different now in Silent Hill Origins? This is your note. Where they're like, oh, here's what it is. You, you trap demons inside of it. And it can also control and amplify thought. It can just do things that we didn't tell you about. That are different from what it did in the first game. So here's your, here's your note. Here's your note explaining why things are different. Demonic Pokeball? Basically, yeah. Lots of old books. Old and won't open. Oh, look at that dog. Look at that good pupper. Right there. Good dog. Right here is where there was the big hole in the wall in Silent Hill 1. When Harry and Sybil are going back and forth about, you know, I'll go first. No, I'm going. I'm a police officer. I'm a concerned dad. And it's everyone's favorite moment in Silent Hill 1. Now it's a much smaller hole, because it's seven years earlier, I guess. So the whole Dahlia hadn't expanded the secret hole entrance to her her hidden altar behind the antique store. So was Dahlia doing this? Like every time she wanted to pray and come back to the altar? crawling through this. Also, look at this exciting crawling action. The only time you ever get to, to crawl around in this game. This was such a momentous and like the, de the, the developers were so proud of the way this shot looks of Travis crawling through here and doing something other than just running around that they used this on the box. They used this on the actual back of the case for Silent Hill Origins. They make sure to include a screenshot. Show the crawling part. <laughs> Show the cool crawling part where all the player does is hold left. My favorite part. A little bit of a kind of mimicking the final save point of Silent Hill 2 where you have the red squares all the way through uh, acting as your save points and then when you get to the end uh, of Silent Hill 2 your last save point is a big red square made up of red squares now it's a, our save points have been these uh, triangles these flowros symbols forming a large pyramid Looks like some kind of altar. So yeah, there's the altar, the picture or depiction of the god. Pretty similar, not exact, but kind of similar to the way it's shown in uh, Silent Hill 1. So now it's time to go into the secret Egyptian tomb rigged up with sleeping gas that Dahlia and Kaufman just kept ready 
behind the antique store. This was there the whole time. She's really worked you over, hasn't she? I'm surprised to see you. We had assumed you'd just leave. Well, time to put her pawn to sleep. Good night. She has no conduit for her power. Mama? Mama? What is it? Don't touch. Oh, it's hot! Leave it be. It is a cage for a demon. Contained? His power will focus yours. Release him, and we will all burn in the fires of hell! drug up Travis and somehow he winds up I guess inside the Flaros time to battle Satan it's it's Diablo welcome to the final boss of origins we've been through all this we've learned everything about Travis's you know sad tragic past And now we're here. He's inside the triangle. I guess let's try to look around. Like, what is this area? What is this room? This space? Where have we gone? Literally just Diablo Boss Arena. Too much damage because we need to finish him with the toaster. But I don't know how much is too much. Do you think that's enough? Do you think it's toaster time? Give him, like, one or two more hunting rifle shots. Now let's throw a toaster. Come on, please be the winning toaster. Please be the sacred toaster. We've only got one toaster, right? We went past it, but I'm making sure we didn't pick up any others. Yeah. Look at everything we have. Okay. All these fucking things. Well, I hit him with the toaster. It was not enough. I'm so sorry. One of these days I'll figure out the exact like damage calculation. So that we can consistently kill him with a toaster every time. Let's see if the lamp is enough. The lamp was not enough. Dude, why are you so beefy? Why are you beef swellington? Hit him with the weights. Take that, Satan. 
More where that came from. How about a typewriter? Still not enough. Hold on. I'm running kind of slow. Let me chug an energy drink. I've been neglecting to drink these the entire game. Give him three more shots with the Redeemer. Try and throw something else at him. Wonder if every throwable has the same damage? For most enemies, if you hit them directly with a fully charged throwable thing, it's always like a one-shot, where you just have to run up and finish them while they're on the ground. But I don't know. I don't know if the actual base damage of it is always the same or not. Love that there's not a faster way to scroll through the fucking tons of things that you pick up over the course of this game. Toolbox. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? What can I throw? Is that all my throwing? Is that all my yeetables? No, we have a crate. We have a crate. We have a TV. We have a toolbox. Typewriter. Hit him with a TV. Or not. Let's just get lasered in the mouth. Don't worry. We just have to scroll through all of these items. Get to my next one. I can throw. Eat the plastic crate. Take that, Satan. Not today, Satan. Don't worry, I've still got a typewriter and a toolbox. They're in here somewhere. Another crate. Try the typewriter. I, yeah. I fucking missed him. Apparently I wasn't close enough for the, the auto-aim to kick in. These fucking things. Next crate. Well, that was a pretty dead on crotch shot. And he's still going. I'm running out of healing stuff. Also, running out of yeetables. I don't know if I'm going to defeat him without having to punch him or bust out a weapon. Yeah, this is my last one. Here we go. Final toolbox. Tool time, motherfucker. It was not enough. God, I might actually just be dead. Um, Katana. He was one hit away. The Katana hit did it. All right. 
But then Travis defeats Satan and Silent Hill 1 can happen? Question mark? Even though there's like a ton of things that don't line up with Silent Hill 1 storyline. But here we go! Silent Hill Origins. This is the ending. The evil's been defeated. The Flowros showed up and spun around. And it's a Pokeball. It's a cage for a demon. Because that's what Dahlia said it is now. There he goes. I guess that demon is still in there when Harry fucks with it later, like seven years from now. All these random cultists. Apparently there was originally supposed to be much more to do with them in, in the first game's script. Oh! There's baby Cheryl. Alessa splitting her soul. And good ending. Travis just walked back to the road. Boy, that sure was weird. I'm glad I got over my dad issues. Time to go back to my life as a trucker. Hopefully in like 30 years I can pick up some kid named Alex Shepard and drop him off at home in Shepard's Glen. Oh, he's got a new lease on life. He's rolling over his, uh, his mileage counter. And Alessa's just there. Still astral projecting somehow. Now with her reincarnated split soul self hey, as a baby. It's a baby. It's a girl. And then we Go get on. Harry and Jody. Cheryl. We'll call her Cheryl. Half the soul is lost. The seed lies dormant. The other half is not lost. We'll use a summoning spell. Hearing her pain, it is sure to come. It will take time. We can wait. That's it. The only time we actually hear Harry's wife in the whole series? True. It's the only time we ever actually hear Jody Mason saying words. How do you get the bad ending? You get the good ending first and then do a new game plus follow-up run. And you kill a ton of enemies. I forget exactly how much it is. 150? Something like that? Wait, so Jody was a cult member? No. Where did you get that from? They just found a baby on the side of the road. They had nothing to do with anything that just happened. Harry and Jody were literally just driving past and found a baby and said, that's cool, let's keep it. <laughs> Neither of them are cult members. They don't even live there. They weren't talking about a summoning spell? That was not Harry and Jody. That, that's not Harry Mason and his wife. The summoning spell was... Talking about the summoning spell was Dahlia. 
talking to the uh, the doctors and Kaufman. It's actually a uh, recreation of the scene that happens in Silent Hill 1, where we see a flashback to that. It is a little confusing. I, I understand, though, Blemish, because it's just audio, and it's bouncing back and forth between Dahlia talking to the cultists and... Uh, Jody and Harry talking after they find the baby. Ah, the soul is lost. Yeah, we need uh, Harry Inaba lending his amazing vocal talents for Random Doctor number two. Yeah, that's it for Silent Hill Origins. Um, originally, my plan was to do Origins and then also Book of Memories. I think that would be a little bit too much for me tonight. I'm already frustrated from trying to get through Origins and then dealing with tech issues. I'm just cursed. I can't get through Silent Hill story playthroughs without technical problems anymore. I don't know what happened. I don't know when I became cursed or why. But, oh man. It's holiday week. Don't even sweat Book of Memories. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish up Book of Memories. We're very close to Zone 500. It might bleed over into 2023, but we'll, we'll finish it. We're, we're very, very close to being done with it forever. But I'm not going to worry about it tonight. Sonic Steak Eater, thank you so much for the full year. One year OHM boys. Thank you so much for the full year of love and support. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, that is it. That's it for Silent Hill Origins. Look at all those times we killed things. We collected 324 items. Um, used the flashlight for 3 hours and 31 minutes. Did my controller stop working? My controller stopped working right at the very end. Wow. Wow. Cool. All right. GG Origins. 